Riding down Highway 61 Sides of the roads all lined with fields Nothing but sunset in the windshield Feel it as soon as I ride into town This is where I go What's up, guys? Brad Chapel back with you. We're at the Spring Grizzly Show 2024. It's going to be a fun time here. Got a lot of cool things to cover, so stay tuned. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn your notifications on, and I'm going to let these guys introduce themselves real quick. I'm uh, Jason Julian from Church Tackle. Uh, make some trolling products. Awesome. I'm Jim Churchill. Um, I'm just a fisherman that uses the products that Jason makes. And they're amazing. Well, so. you know, we're all about new techniques and different techniques to keep catching crappie. And, you know, live sonar is great and all that. But there's a time and place for different techniques that can really catch a lot of fish, catch a lot of crappie even. Kind of tell us about some of the products that you make that can help people catch more crappie. So the main product that we make is a planer board. So... A lot of guys are running different length rods to get their baits out to the side of the boat. And these do the same thing. You could run all the same size rods, but this board will take each line out different distances from the boat. So something that we're hearing kind of at the show is a lot of guys are catching the most fish or their biggest fish on their outside rod, the longest rod. Well, what if you could run a line 20 feet past that rod or 30 feet past that rod? And that's what the planer board can do. You know, I know for me, Lake Washington, uh, a couple of years ago, these fish get into shallow water and they stay really high in the water column as well. And you, you'll go into an area and you know there's fish there. There's fishermen everywhere, but you can't catch them as well. So that's why I really started long line and, and also pulling planer boards back then because I could get away from the boat. And it's amazing how many fish spook just by the boat coming through an area. But planer boards, for me, you can take just about anybody out there as well, and it's kind of like watching a bobber almost, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, you're waiting for that little flag to go down and, you know, reeling the fish, but kind of go through the setup and how somebody, you know, what kind of rods would they need or the whole basics of getting set up to run yeah, some so planer the, boards here. So the basics, uh, you, you can run these on all the same length rod. You do, you just clip your line, clip your line into that pad, and then clip your line onto that clip, and that's what pulls that flag down. So when you get a fish, that flag is going to pull down and that board's going to pull back out of line. Uh, it's especially easy if you're running a couple on one side because you'll kind of have them lined up, and suddenly one will get pulled back, get pulled out of line. It's the easiest indication that there's a fish there. Um, and then you want to run your rod tips a little bit higher than normal. Try to keep that line from the rod tip to the board not touching the water. What's about the, the ideal pound test for is running planter boards? Um, monofilament is preferred, and we run 10 pound up north is what we run. A little bit heavier maybe than you guys are running, but 10 pound is it's a nice diameter to kind of clip in the clips. Like back behind the clip, you can run pretty much any kind of style bait. I know we use them a lot for, you know, just jigs, but also in the summertime on uh, some of the big waterways, those fish get out and suspend in open water and, you know, they're in loose schools, but we'd run a crankbaits from them. And, and that's, that's a really good fit for the boards. Uh, 
you know crank baits it'll pull all the all the crappie size crank baits the bandits and whatnot it's that's not a problem um it's actually a really good fit for them i know um you've got another product here as well that we're going to talk about uh that i really wasn't familiar with until i stepped over there and you showed me a little video of how it works and man that's that's a pretty neat little deal too yeah so it's our it's our stern planer um so just like you would with a planer board you run your bait or your jig back your 20 feet your 30 feet or whatever your lead is clip this on that end this end would go towards the boat pulls through the water but straight behind the boat so you're able to set that depth of your bait and run it i run them about 200 feet behind the boat because especially shallow water clear water those fish are splitting around your boat they're going to split yeah. they're going to run into your planer boards they'll run into your rods on the side but what you don't catch they're going to go back to doing what they were doing behind that boat they'll start to relax things get quiet and here's two more lines coming through i know another thing that i've noticed with talking about the same subject line is a lot of times these fish that don't run to the sides they sink down so i'm marking them as i'm going over the top of them and let's say 10 foot deep and but they're actually only about four to six foot deep they just kind of sink down but as soon as the boat gets clear past them they rise back up yep that that would be right in that wheelhouse as well and it, you're able to to specifically put those baits at the depth that you want it but 200 feet behind the boat you know <laughs> it's sneaky uh, the stern planers for guys that run different length rods you could run four or six stern planers out the back of the boat if you wanted to the big thing is you're keeping your line off the water and it's back there and it's just it's just the sneakiest thing you know if you're if you're pushing eight and pulling 12 Good by the time job. that boat's gone for five minutes and all of a sudden here come some jigs by yeah. you know them fish have come back there and probably suspended back up whatever structure was there and it picks them off i mean we've been doing them for salmon fishing i mean i've fished Forever. them before jason owned the company like i still have my first set of church tackle planer boards from like 1990 91. so people say they're expensive but that's 30 what is that 34 years 30 33 34 <laughs> right. years so what what can you buy in fishing and have for that long <laughs> i don't have anything that old i don't believe yeah. in fishing yeah i mean it's just a sneaky thing and where we live it's clear water last year at grenada i clipped one of those on in march the fish you couldn't hardly catch them uh, without a jig pole just dropping it on them you know right and that that's probably my least favorite way to fish but you have to do that if you're going to fish a tournament so i clipped one of them on and as i moved around pulling i just had it i had the jig about a foot off that board and uh, i heard a noise and i looked back and that thing's it was just sitting there but it was going like a bobber i caught a 257 off it oh, with wow. a jig only about a foot off of that rear clip but it was it was probably 40 feet away from the boat just sitting over there and it'd move a little and i'm sure something it just ended up somewhere but it works so you know another really big advantage that i wanted to tell you guys about is also wind and wave conditions when you get out there and you're trying to say live scope or spider rigging and that bounce of the boat and yeah, just slap hard for us boat control staying with them you know planter boards you can set that eye pilot or whatever trolling motor you have in a direction maintain that speed and it doesn't affect the actual presentation of the the baits at that point right no we, we were talking about that with les uh les smith yeah about uh going into the wind and how the boat slap spooks them and he's using 18 foot rods and it still spooks them but you run oh, yeah. them boards out to the side those fish bump out there they don't hear that board slicing through no. the water like a knife and then you know if you're pulling two fin spins a double fin spin rig all of a sudden here comes these jigs through just quiet and deadly <laughs> I like he's got sound effects i like that i don't know if i had another guest that come on here and do sound effects but that's pretty i like that jim i appreciate that we'll have to add that to a lot of other shows i think but you know uh, tell me kind of what these retail for and what's it going to take somebody to get up set up them so so the tx12 that's this board the board itself is from 29 to 32 dollars mm -hmm. the flag system is going to be around 20 dollars right so a decent investment in that but all replacement parts are available rebuild them there's no reason to ever have to replace that board and the uh, stern planer itself is this is the smaller one we offer a bigger one i think this one's about 18 19 dollars retail 
And you can just throw them in your rod locker box and have them ready yep. at all given times. That's yep. kind of how I always did them as well. Um, you know, I, I like them because you can take anybody in the boat with you and watch these little guys go to work back behind the boat. And it's, you know, you're not sitting in one little spot. You're covering a lot of water. And it's just a really neat technique if you if you – get out there and fish and it's windy or whatever the different circumstances that these boards can actually help you catch way more fish than you're anticipating uh i recall tommy scarless he won the national championship i can't recall exactly what year it was but uh on grenada lake pulling planter boards and that was the first time it was really really introduced into crappie fishing at the time and uh pre-fishing for the tournament i mean i was one of the guys fished that tournament and I was like, what in the world is this guy doing out there? <laughs> and, you know, he comes in and wins that tournament uh, very convincingly. <laughs> I think the top three places was by planter boards, and it was only three guys pulling planter boards. Right. Out of a 200-boat field. So, I mean, it's not like a 30-boat a tournament we were talking. We were talking about a 200-boat field on uh, Grenada Lake, and you don't think of planter boards in the south. Right. Not a, not like the north, because you guys use them for a lot of different you know species out there. But crappie, they're really subject to uh, being caught with planter boards. A lot of catfish guys are starting to use oh, these wow. in the river. They're, they'll run them back in the river, put their spread out, and just slip that boat back in under a log jam, get their baits let back the in under it. and let the current do the work. And it just slips it right back there, and they can see right where it goes, and, psh, and that board or flag goes down, boom. See another sound effect. <laughs> yep, sound effects. <laughs> Got to have them. I like it. <laughs> well, I definitely thank you coming on, and uh, I think it's a great technique to get out there. And am I missing anything as far as technique-wise or anything that you need? No, I, I don't think so. That, that shallow water, that clear water, and those yeah. spooky fish, that's kind of what we're you know, looking to key in on. Well, I, I know they work because I've used them myself in the past, and they have been proven even in the, the the tournament series years and years ago that they can catch a lot of fish as well and do good at any place fish are suspending for sure. But until next time, check these guys out. Where's the easy way to get a hold of you? Uh, churchtackle.com. Churchtackle.com. Jim? Churchtackle.com. You can hit me up on Facebook at Jim Churchill or Jim Churchill Outdoor Adventures on TikTok and YouTube. Awesome. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Hit it like. Give us some comments. If you ever pull planter boards and caught fish, I'd like to hear it. Till next time, Brad Chapel here. Jim Churchill. Jason Julian. Holla. And I'm out from Big Muddy River. Place I'll always remember Cabin on the lake and a fishing pole Forever here I'll rest my soul I can feel my worries drift away